Hello and welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapers TV show and podcast. I am your host, Christine Innes. I have been so excited to talk to this very beautiful soul, Alicia. Welcome, beautiful. Hello, thank you so much for inviting me today to have this wonderful interview with you. I've been I've been secretly excited as well. <laughs> oh my god. So we've literally been Facebook stalking each other for a, a while. And then we became friends and then we met in person and I'm just like going, oh my God, it has just, it has just been amazing. So I'm excited to chat to you um, and we've got so much I want to talk to you about. But before I get carried away, um, I'm going to hand over to you to introduce yourself to our beautiful listeners today. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Christine. So my name's Alicia Ann Wade. I am a gratitude expert slash therapist, uh, life coach, business mentor, leadership coach. I also am a speaker on stage. I've also published and produced books and journals for myself and for my clients. And then I also help with other authors to become uh, established authors and speakers on stage, as well as, crazily enough, uh, collaborative books. So currently right now, I've got 23 authors in the pipeline coming through in a book called Forgiveness. And just last week, I did a live book launch, first live, first live event, and I had over 30 people, which was absolutely wonderful. And um, I also do sound healings um, with some of the elders here in my uh, on country here with the um, Indigenous culture at a respite centre. So they absolutely love it. They get to do beating and stuff. And I have the sound healing going on in the background. Stay tuned because there's probably going to be more happening in Fraser Coast with sound healing, which I'm excited about. And I'm currently starting my master's in applied positive psychology. So hence the reason why I'm always harping on about gratitude. It's something that I'm really obsessed with, really passionate about. And because I've collected stories, because I've done it myself, and because I get private messages from people to help uh, to tell me that they've gone from darkness into lightness, I knew that this was a gift that I needed to pass on to others. So that's a snippet about me. I do also do a bit of volunteer work. So I currently work with, in a safe house here in my town in Harvey Bay. And that is called Miriam Cottage. So we help with short term accommodation for women who are subjected to homelessness, mental health issues, and also escaping DV or other negative situations. So I'm so fortunate to be the secretary there. Um, and there will be changes within the executive team. So stay tuned for this. And I also am a part of a working body with the Queensland government. So under uh, Palaszczuk's government, they have created a community forum where lots of leaders and community members come together to talk about the issues within the region and because I'm in a regional town livability is one aspect um, we've also got treaty to country we've also got workforce um, projects that we're working on and I'm really excited to be in this working group over the next two years it's opened up my eyes to so much and I'm just really really grateful for the experience that has come before me yeah and we can also add like cover girl you know to to that so much impressive list and like honestly it is such a joy to work with you and you know just to be around you like you know you get on a call with her and I'm like I was talking to somebody yesterday and I'm like going you just get like this bounce of energy you're just like going oh my god like what else can I do you know and that's what I love working with you know heart-centered entrepreneurs who who get it, who have had these life experiences and are now giving back. And it, like, it literally is such a pleasure to, to work with people like yourself. Thank you. Thank you. And I think even more than that, like the corporate escapist, I was caught up in the corporate world. And now because I've done this huge transition from the corporate world, building my way up into operations, having a complete mental breakdown from everything in life, and then rebuilding myself into this new, it's like an evolution of Alicia. 
And I have, I always say there's like a seven year cycle with me. So I've already gone through my seven year cycle and there's a new seven year cycle that's happening right now. And I'm really excited for what the trajectory of that is. I'm a big avid manifester, goal setter, you name it. I'm very good at it. And that happens like, it can happen really quickly. Like within a second, I go, oh, I need this. And bang, it happens. Yep. Like recently, I've just heard, I'm injuring a really sore back at the moment. You wouldn't even tell with the energy that I'm bringing here and standing up and everything. And I parked outside yesterday to get my hair done. And lo and behold, there's a spinal clinic that's just opened up just a couple of weeks ago. I went, thank you, universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff happens to me all the time. So things will come into my proximity. And like I say to everybody, when things come from your external world mm. to your internal world, it's for you to take that action. If you reject it, you won't get that opportunity back to you again because universe God is always giving you clues. So take on those mm. clues to help you keep moving in your journey and I love that because like obviously my quote is dreams plus action equal reality and you know when I first started learning about you know the law of attraction and all of that the key that part is the action and it's it can be your thoughts it's like how you're feeling it's what you're projecting out and this is what I love gratitude so much because you can't attract more if you're not happy with what you currently have and you know, you and I have both been on that journey where we've hit complete rock bottom and to to really think about what you could be grateful for in that moment, it is difficult. But when you think then you go, you know what, I get the opportunity to wake up today. I'm so grateful for that. And I think so many of us are living in the, oh my God, I want so much more. I want this, I want that. But to come back to self, to come back to what we have right in front of us, it's a humbling, but a I always say like an eye-opening sort of experience because we forget what we have. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I always talk, there's a few things that I want to extend upon this. So I always say to people, I had a pre-COVID before COVID. So when um, 31st of December, 2019, I gave in my resignation to my corporate position and then went into the wild, wild world of opening up my own business. And there was no one knocking on my door. I had one, one or two clients and $50 in my bank account for six weeks. So I did hit rock bottom again. So it was the second time round. And I'm, I'm recent, I've just recently started to share this story with a lot of people. And they're like, what, really? And I'm like, yeah, I go, I go, I was just mass marketing and mass producing at that time because I had to get out there. I had to step up. I had to be responsible for my income. I didn't have that. As employees, yes, it's great. You've got that residual income, but when you work for yourself, you've got to fight hard. So I ended up landing a contract as a business mentor here with our community center and then COVID hit. And at that time, a lot of people who were starting up their small businesses sometimes do the NICE program. So I was very fortunate to have that form of income coming through, $500 a fortnight I had. So uh, right up until July, August, August was my uh, life-defining moment where I made what I would usually make in six months. So I could back, back pay all of the missed income and pay off all my debts. I was nearly going to sell my soul to whatever I needed to do to get me. I, I just went, what is this trying to teach me? And it was a real life-defining moment where I was really cultivating a lot of gratitude in my life. I realized that I was happy with everything that I had around me. I had a great family who loved and supported me. I had a house. I had a house. I, kept, I took it right back every day uh, during COVID. I was walking about a hundred kilometers a week, so I was really like self-reflection, doing twenty kilometers a day, going right. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And just those moments in time, it got me to really think. Well, what what does my future look like? for the next 10 to 20 years ahead. And so in 2020, I produced over hundred eBooks and then three programs and also five journals. So yeah, I was a, I was a making machine. <laughs> and then I started to get, because I did the work, I started to get those clients coming through to yeah. me. So I was just so grateful for what I could do and what I had 
because those hundred books was from all the education that I learned and I was keeping that inside me and I'm like I need to give this to people I need to stop hiding in my shadows and being you know this information gatherer I need to learn and give that out and I learned the system on how to create ebooks really, really quickly. I do have an ebook workshop that I do for a lot of people in my community where I teach them how to use templates and stuff and where to get content and all of that sort of stuff to take the recreating things and just create things based on who you are as a person because people are purchasing into you and there's already an abundance of information. So it's a matter of grabbing bits of information and putting it into like a bento box and gifting that to people to support what it is that you're already saying. And a lot of researchers do that already, as I've noticed. And like when you go to uni and taste, they use things, they grab things from everywhere to put it into a module or a unit. And so that's what I try to teach my clients is don't sit there trying to write things from scratch. There's so much out there. See what you can grab six to six things six different things and bang you're an expert in that niche or whatever it is you're trying to do so and then you put your twist your perception your experience and events based on what the information you've brought in so yeah I teach a lot of people about that and yeah I've gone on a tangent but yes no, I, I love it because I think so many times as an entrepreneur like I, I I got pulled up yesterday actually I was speaking to a, a like a high-end coach and um they're like going, who's the we? And I'm like, going, there is no we, it's all me, you know? And this is the whole thing with entrepreneurs. Like we forget to take ownership of what we've created and <laughs> actually our gifts and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I know that I do that myself, that I, do, and I've had to learn yeah. the we and you, I used to say you. So I wasn't, I wasn't even putting it to myself. Yeah. I talk a lot about language creates your reality. So be really aware of how you're creating this yeah. reality and I'll pull myself up. Like if I'm disassociating myself like that and this, yeah. you notice the difference in your words. So be really aware of what you're actually mm -hmm. creating because your language creates your reality, it, especially that internal dialogue that goes on. I used to say, I hate the world and the world hates me. You could only imagine what my world used to be like. Now I say, I love the world and the world loves me. And I get lots of love now, but I'm still manifesting that perfect partner. So yes. anyone out there, perfect partner, please come. <laughs> I don't know as perfect partner, but I'm manifesting someone that's going to be that lifelong partner. But you know, it's about that language that we're creating for ourselves. What is it that we truly desire and want? The other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is a lot of people think that um, once you've done gratitude, it's about, you know, being grateful for what you already have. It doesn't discount that you're not allowed to have the things you want as well. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think that, that, oh, once you do gratitude, you shouldn't want to need all of this, but you're allowed to hope and dream and you should be worthy of whatever it is that you truly desire in your life. The thing is, the point of this matter is when you are grateful, you will get things more from the universe from God because you appreciate and take so much care with what's already around you. If you're not going to take around take care of what's around you, you're not going to get more. And that, that's where gratitude gives you an abundance of things. Mm. It's switching that mindset from lack of to then abundance. I've noticed like this year I've committed... 365 days of gratitude every single day. Some days, I, I spoke about this at the book launch last week. I said, um, there's been a couple of weeks where I've, like a week where I've missed a couple of days and I've done the catch-ups going, okay, I'm going to catch up on my gratitudes. However, what I've realized is it got me to self-reflect on what I'm grateful for for that day, even though, you know, the stuff may have hit the fan, as they say, the S hate hit the fan. But the thing is, like, I still took that time to see what it was that I was grateful for that day. And it's such a discipline to do 365 days. Usually, I give up on a year commitment within the first two months. And a lot of people will do that with New Year's resolutions. And I'm proud to say I have pushed through it. And we're nearly in September. And... I can actually firmly say, like, I won't be giving up this practice every day I'm going. This is something that's integral. Like my fitness, gratitude is another thing. 
And what I've noticed with, uh, because I am studying my uh, master's in applied positive psychology, gratitude is a strength and virtue to move forward in life. And there is a whole lot of different topics to help you to move forward, to have that positive impact, to have that happier lifestyle, because people are looking to have their best life and to be happy. I know when I had my mental breakdown eight years ago, all I wanted to do was be happy. And now, right now in this moment, I realize there's a whole series of topics to help you to move forward. It's not just one way. You've got gratitude, you've got optimism, you've got love and humility, you've got creativity, you've got authenticity, hope, forgiveness. And these are just some of the topics that I'm going to be doing. I've sort of hinted and seeded. <laughs> I've done gratitude, forgiveness, and I've uh, recently opened up my doors for spirituality because that's been a big thing in my life. And also faith and belief. These are strengths and virtues to help you to have that positive mindset, to move forward and to enjoy life and be happy. And if I can help that person, if I can help one person to feel and experience this, because I know what it felt to be at my darkest. I felt like I was a person in a deep, dark hole and I did not know how to get out. Yeah. And I think this is where, you know, having these conversations, it's so powerful because everybody can look, especially now we've got social media, you know, and they look and they're like, oh my God, their life is perfect. Everything is just so beautiful and everything like that. But when you dive in deep, like, I look, I took out the word perfection from my vocabulary because it simply doesn't exist. Like I would go, oh my God, this is perfect. I'm ready to hit send or you'll notice something. You know, I've published magazines and there's spelling mistakes. Like there's all these different things that happen or you go, oh, I want to reach this. And then you go, oh, well, I've reached it. So what's next? So you're never actually going to be satisfied, you know, with everything. So I believe that conversations need to be had. And this is why I love like you're doing the books, you're, you're sharing the stories. And this is why I love doing the magazine, the TV show, the podcast, and, you know, the books as well, because when people can peek behind sort of those curtains and actually go, well, what's made them who they are to get to where they are. And also what are the practices or, you know, just even the people that they're surrounding themselves with, you know, to help them improve their lives. It's, it's it's like having a I don't know like this sort of tap that's constantly running and you can put your cup underneath and go oh I'll take a little bit now or I'll take a little bit here and this is what stories do to people exactly right and they say the top five people that hang around you are a, a reflection of who you are in this present moment so really check in are these the people that I really want to hang out with mm. and me to be my best version right now I've got I've got three people and two people just keep floating in and out people keep floating in and out because I haven't met my top five yet yes and I say that because I'm very selective because my standards and expectations are up here mm -hmm. now when I start to be friends and this is important like boundaries and all of this sort of stuff when I start to get to know someone I start to look into their their world and their map of the world because I always say the map's not the territory my map is not the territory everybody's map should be acknowledged validated and no judgment at all. However, you can tell by how someone shapes and shapes their world through their language and the way that they act and do. And the thing is, this is why we have values in life. You have boundaries, you have standards, you have expectations, and it's okay to have that. It's okay to have this in your life right now, in this moment, because if you see things, you're worth, like I always say, you're worthy of so much and so much more. So take that chance. Whoops, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> more dramatical effects there as well <laughs> look honestly if you get to see alicia in person it is like this like and she, like we are we are so much the same my girlfriend always said to me she goes i think that you were italian in your past life because you were like this you know and i'm like yes yeah, so much so <laughs> exactly the same. that's why i stand i don't sit because uh my stands there's a different energy that i have and then I want to show people that energy that I have because it's really hard to do it through a camera, especially Zoom meetings and workshops. I'm just going to say this. It is really hard, like as a presenter and someone that's been doing it since uh, 2013, it's so much harder to read someone off a camera and you're like, guys, are you loving this? Please put in the comments if you love this. And they're like, yeah, I love this. And I'm like, going, 
man, the amount of faces that are like, yes. uh huh. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I look. I do. I, I was literally in a three day intensive, and it was it was amazing. I got like so much out of it, and then I'm like going, "Oh, my energy's dropped." I'm like going, "Oh my god, how can I harness this energy to come back to it?" And like, I I want to, you know, you know what it's like being as an entrepreneur, and you've got so many things, and it's also, you know, just general life happens as well. What are some of the things that you could share, like maybe your top one or two things for people to actually bring back that energy, you know, to to get focused again to help you achieve those goals? Ooh, good question. So there's a few things that I actually do. Sometimes I'll do a minute. I'm just going to get my notepad. Hang on a second. <laughs> get your notepad. Get your notes out. Get That's that. Thing, girls. <laughs> easily so some of the things that i will do and this is not for everybody if you can take one or two things and help that out um i have been to tony robbins unleash the power within and it's about changing your state changing your environment like if your environment is creating that emotion take yourself out of there some of the things that i'll do is i'll go straight to the beach if i'm having if i'm really stuck in a mindset and really stuck and just need to get out of this office space that i've got here i go take off my shoes I go down and walk barefoot and I'll walk for about an hour or I do have a kayak. I'll go on the water because I, I'm a water sign. I'm a Cancerian. I love water. So I'll go and do a kayak ride. Or the other thing I'll do is I'll just go pack up. And if it's really, really bad, like I'll go for a 20K walk in the bush somewhere and just get back in touch with nature because sometimes we can be out of touch in nature because we're in such a concrete jungle and it's important to get back into nature where you can be present in the moment to yourself to your thoughts and I've had the most amazing ideas come up when I've done this which reminds me I was meant to go last weekend to Fraser Island and I know there's a hike waiting to come because that's where I get my ideas and that boost of motivation if you don't want to do something long, crazy and drastic like I do here, uh, you can do a meditation for 15 minutes. And there's so much on YouTube, like motivative, guided meditations, anxiety, stress, whatever it is that you're feeling, mm -hmm. feel into those emotions as well. I've got a five step process. Uh, I think it's a four or five step process. You uh, breathe it, breathe, breathe the emotion, feel it, name it. Oh, there we go. Name it. And then let it go. So it is a four-step process. And then you'll notice it dissipates. And you'll put these funny words on it. Like once I had um, stupid idiot on one of my um, emotions, I'm like, what is this stupid idiot I'm feeling? It's like here. And it was in my stomach. It was all on self-worth, like my solar plex. And I'm like going, oh, my gosh, no wonder. So it's about noticing where these feelings and emotions are being held on your body and releasing it too, which is really important. Great thing. Go and dance if you need to. Put whack on some music and dance. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes go to the gym, and if I'm and I may get my journal out and just start journaling. Like what is actually coming up for me? Writing pen to paper. Research. There is so much research out there to say there's a whole psychology with writing pen to paper. It actually, there's a transmitting thing that does. And there's so much research that's coming out with unis and researchers and doctors and stuff on the benefits of writing to heal, to help you overcome whatever you're going through. So yeah, that those are my little tips and tricks. And if anyone wants to use some of them, go by all means, use them. They've been marvelous and wonderful in my life. And I, I mm -hmm. love doing that to just get myself out of that funk. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I'm a water person. So, I mean, I know that you see all my posts, like I'm down at the beach, I'm taking the dog for a walk or, and uh, to get to the beach is a 45 minute drive for me. So it is not like just hop in the car or, you know, um, so, you know, it's, yeah, it, it's just like, you know, it is, it's, you've got to find, I always say, find your happy place. What's going to make you creative and, you know, to do all of that. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, we did Tony Robbins actually um, at the same time last year. So, and it was virtual and it was really weird. Like, here's Alicia popping up on the screen. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I, think I, I, I actually have to say, I think it was every single day, every single time they were putting our room up, they were putting me up. I think I was just bringing the energy yeah. into it. And everyone's like, yeah, they're like, Alicia, have you got shares in it? I'm like, no, no, no. no. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> 
No, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, so uh, look, I love what you do. I actually have this beside my bed. Oh. And I, I like every now and then, and I would just like going because it is the um, 365 days of gratitude to change your world. And like, I will just literally go and, you know, and I'll just like go, okay, what do I need to hear today? And I'll open it up. And it is, it's really powerful because, you know, gratitude changed my life I understand the whole power of it um if I don't write gratitude down I would before I go to bed say what I'm grateful for today as well so I understand the absolute power of it and I I'm literally so grateful I I love I love and adore you I am so grateful I get to call you like a friend and um we have the most amazing conversations um you know and I am so so grateful and blessed to have you as part of my life as well so thank you so much beautiful thank you that meant so much and I felt that in my heart that was oh. so awesome. and, oh. <laughs> I'm not crying you're crying so it's all good <laughs> I don't even have waterproof mascara on today, so let's not go in there. Oh, the fact that you're using that 365, that was such a tedious task. To, so to see that, like I really pushed that that book out um, to try and come up with 365 days of what you could go, cultivate gratitude. It's really hard, really, really hard to think of things to give to people. And to see that you just pull it out and use it for what it's been needs to be used for, uh, that just warms my heart. It's like, oh, it's being used. Wow, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for trusting me to share your story with the world as well. And um, as I said, I, I love stories. I am a big believer that every time we share a story, a little bit of our DNA is embedded in somebody. And at the right time, it's going to be activated. And I had this amazing dream last night that I'm going to be, the, there's a particular person who I want to work with and I'm going to be on stage sharing all of this with them. And yeah, so um, I, I'm such a big fan you talk about this uh, I'm going to do a bit of a name drop right now but there is someone in the early childhood education field who I'm actually meeting up for dinner next week when I go down to Sydney for an awards ceremony that I'm in that I've been fortunate enough to be state finalist so you know the front cover of the, the magazine and then all of these awards came out and I'm just like going wow see when you when you do this and step up things just go bang 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 um, so Anthony Seaman, if he ever watches this, thank you so much. He is one of my role models. He is yeah. the leading expert in early childhood education. I've been following him for 10 years and he's probably been stalking me for the last 10 years too. So he's watched my journey from going into early childhood education with the company that I was an operations manager, seeing me have my breakdown and we've been friends on Facebook and he actually reached out to me and said, when you're coming down to Sydney, let's catch up. So I reached out to him and I said, I'm coming down and lo and behold, we're catching up for dinner, which I'm really 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 excited about so stay tuned I'm not sure what's happening but I love Anthony's work he does huge conferences for early childhood educators my background if anyone is curious is 20 years in the industry so I'm a big advocate for children children's rights ensuring that children have the best step to life because the first eight years of a child's life conditions them for the rest of their life and and we need to invest in early childhood educators and their well-being so then that way they're projecting they're comforting they they're meeting the needs of our children and when we look at the maslow hierarchy of needs educators need to ensure that their needs are being met as well just as much as the children and so i on this big this is why i'm doing my positive psychology stuff I want to integrate this and embed it into daily practices for both educators and children and break this cycle of negativity because there's so much stuff to move forward. I know we can have toxic positivity, however, use it to its advantage. Yeah, absolutely. My daughter-in-law actually is about to graduate as a, um, a, a primary school teacher. And so, you know, she's, you know look she's doing an amazing job raising my grandson and um you know which I just adore and yeah it's it's really interesting to see how we are changing you know the the learnings like I'm I, 
I'm learning stuff. I'm like, I wish I knew that when I was raising my son like 20 something years ago. Um, but it, it, it is, it's, I, I think, you know, the more positivity we put out into the world, the more we're going to make an impact with it. And I think this is why your work is so needed. And um, I'm here to support you and, you know, help share your message to the world as well. Oh, thank you. I, I, you don't understand how much it means to me. Um, more than you could imagine. I've had some really, really dark times and having this opportunity to be here and talk with you and then spread my worst message worldwide it's amazing so thank you so much my pleasure beautiful and now i'm going to pop all of the details of how you can reach out to alicia um where you can get a copy of the magazine and read more of her story and i just want to say thank you so much beautiful for being here and sharing your story to the world thank you so much here's to many more things happening in the future as well oh absolutely <laughs> i just know there's so much going to happen so i look you and i could talk for hours i know that so um but i just want to thank everyone who has been here today and watching this episode of the corporate escapers tv show and podcast remember to follow your passion and live your best life if you want more information head over to our website or follow us on socials at the corporate escapers and i'm your host christine innes and i will be back next week for another episode love and light to you all